Hey guys, what's up? I'm Magic Bard, and I'm going to show you how to do this super speed quicksilver effect in After Effects. As you saw in the intro, I first saw it on, I mean, other than the X-Men videos, there was the video that Track of Bang Bang released on his Instagram account where you see Wampa, that's the kid right there, um, kind of make his way around the room in this little super speed ordeal. Um, it's relatively simple, fairly straight to the point. Um, so I'll kind of go through this as quickly as possible and just show you kind of what I did without going through the whole thing um, as a step-by-step -step process, but more of a, I'll show you my composition and how I kind of outlined it out. So you'll see that um, Wampa moves around the room, the camera moves with him, there's a little bit of blur every time he moves, and you see the camera kind of switch over to wherever he goes. So we'll do the same thing, try to emulate what Track of Bang Bang's doing, another good visual effects artist out there, and let's break it down. So I'll go into my composition, the super fast comp that I made, and then show you all the layers of how I did it, okay? So what we have is three clips that I shot. I have the bottom of the stairs, which is the end when the camera's looking down, and then I have the top of the stairs, okay? And the top is going to be the same shot as the middle. So the top and the middle are the same for me. It's just, I, I left the camera on a tripod the whole time, and you can kind of see that she's on the middle right here, that's why I named it middle of the stairs, and then we have the top. So, inside of my comp, we start off, let, let me get inside there, start off at the top, and this is my uh, top of the stairs layer, nothing really, no effects going on here, until she super speeds or gets down to the middle of the stairs. And let's kind of zoom in there to see exactly what's going on. So what I did was I have my plate layer below my layer with the actress on it, Samantha. So on the plate layer, obviously there's nothing but uh, stairs in the frame. Okay. So, and then we have Samantha on this layer. And then what I did here was I cut her out Okay, so I cut a piece of her, and let me turn the effect off so you can kind of see what I did. I, I cut her out right here, and then I added this directional blur to make it look like she's moving so fast the camera can't even see her. Okay, and what I did was I added just one frame here, then a frame, or two frames, or actually I did one frame of the plate layer and then I added, I duplicated this layer twice and then moved her over to her position, okay? So I moved her down to the middle of the stairs and then cut right to the shot of her kind of jumping forward into this as if she kind of is like a hard way of her to uh, to stop, she's just moving so fast. So we have that, and that is going to be the building blocks of this effect, okay? And every time you want your actor, or your actress to move, you're gonna be doing this little, this little action right here of cutting out the actor, doing this directional blur, making sure if they're moving side to side, I'd put the direction at 90, if they're moving up and down, you can leave it at zero and then just blur it out as you can see I did right there to whatever you think works best. Now, sometimes I would put this dark and blend mode onto my blurred fast moving layer and it'll kind of blend it into our shot. So I don't know, I, I liked it. It made her look like she was behind the stairs with that blend mode so that's why I put it there. Um, but you don't you don't have to do it every time so we have that breakdown right now 
when we get over to the middle of the stairs and then she jumps down, there's a camera movement, okay? So let's kind of check that out. So what I did was I shot a plate of the top of the stairs, which is what you're looking at right here, okay? Then I shot a plate of the bottom of the stairs. I connected the two by parenting our bottom to the top, okay? Now you can do that by just pick whipping it down here, letting go and then it'll parent it to it. Or you can do this, which is a little bit harder because you're gonna have to find it. But, so I, you've got to parent the two together and then that way, whenever you move your top layer, the bottom layer will be connected to it. Okay, so let's just kind of look at those on their own. So what we're, what we're doing right here is we have two layers that are connected. And if I kind of zoom out, let's see if you can see it. So, so you have the bottom layer right here. As you can see, the frame is kind of outside of our composition. And then it'll move in as the top layer moves out. Okay, and it's just a little bit, as you can see. It's not, it's not really a lot, but it'll, it'll really add to the effect when you do your kind of own um, visual effects tilt on this okay so and what you can see right here is a little uh, mask I made that I feathered out to kind of get the layers to look like they're uh, blending together and then also what I did on top of that was I added a mesh warp okay and the reason why I did that was because here let me take it off to show you that um, my camera had a little uh, a little distortion as you can see so I added the mesh warp to kind of connect the lines I mean it, it does a fine job not not exactly the best job but um, it's good enough since this little interaction right here is only four frames long uh, no one's really gonna notice anyways so the mesh warp is good enough for now and basically what the mesh warp does is I can move lines over to kind of fit okay so you can see if you move this over it'll move the wall over to the left so let me just uh, command Z that to go back to where it was and that's kind of how you can mesh things together okay so if lines if lines or walls are not linking up then uh, add a little mesh warp um, open up the columns okay and the more columns you have the more um, the easier it is to line things up so don't 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 do you know don't just move this over and get as many columns as you want because that that'll just be a hassle so just go to the amount that's good enough for you which for me was this uh, uh, 15 and then you can kind of line up the lines okay so that's a little bit on that and um, and then we have, as you can see, the same thing going on here. I blurred her out, had her jump over the um, railing, and then as she jumps down, I took this layer, duplicated it twice, cut her out, and that's where you can see her blur right there. And then I just kind of moved her into her spot, okay? And then as she's jumping over, that's when, let me press U to show you the keyframes. That's when I move the position of our plates down. Okay? So, we've got that part. And then for the end, I did the exact same thing. The little four frames, jumped her in, and did the same thing with the right here. I cut out her body right there moved it over a little bit to the left had her and then I think I scaled it up as well let me see yeah scaled it up about 20 percent so it's at 120 right there and then I went over here cut her out right here and then added two more frames and moved her into position there so basically all you need to know is once you do it once right here in the very beginning then you've kind of got it locked down. It's fairly simple and you just keep doing it from each transition 
and you kind of move her over. Now, next part you need to know is once you create the super speed parts all over, I would pre-comp this whole thing or what you can do is another way to just pre-comp the whole thing is by taking your composition and adding it as a new composition, okay? And then when I did that when I did that, I went over it created my super fast final and that's where I started to create the camera movements, okay? So we have our first composition, which was shot on a Sony A7S II, so shot in 4K, as you can see right here, 3840 by 2160. And I brought that into my, I, I made a new comp, okay, and brought that whole sequence in there. So that's right here, this is the 4K sequence. I turned this composition, here let me select it, into a 1920 by 1080 and then that way I could zoom in and start zooming around the clip and moving it around just like how uh, Track of Bang Bang did with his um, as you can see there's that sort of artificial camera movement as Wampa's moving around the room so here let me let me kinda show you that um, So the camera is pointing over here to the right, and then it'll z kind of move over to the left, move over again to the left. And so whenever Wampa moves, the camera moves with him, right? So so you can kind of do that is if you shoot in 4K and then turn your sequence into a 1920 by 1080, then you can move around. Or if you if your camera doesn't shoot in 4K and you, it only shoots in 1920 by 1080 just make the sequence smaller you can even make it a square 1080 by 1080 like which is the Instagram format and then you can still move the camera around okay so uh, don't ever be limited by um, what I'm doing because um, there are other ways around it and that's how you do it guys that's basically the effect um, there are other ways to finesse it you can you can do a lot in visual effects but um, I'm gonna stop it right here to try and keep this as short as possible and uh, let me know what you guys end up coming up with so I'm Magic Bard I'm uh, going to be making you guys a couple of other tutorials that I'm working on right now so I'll be releasing those soon and I look forward to seeing your comments um, listening to what you guys have to say and uh, let me know if there are any other tutorials you want to check out and we'll get to it as soon as possible. Alright guys, thanks for watching.